This patient has just arrived from the operating room about 15 minutes ago. Um, as you can see, there's many lines and monitoring devices. Um, I'll walk you through some of them. This is our monitor at the bedside. It will have your blood pressure, your heart rate, and your temperature, and also some measurements that allows us to see how well your heart is functioning. There will be a breathing tube down the back of your throat doing the breathing for you until you're awake enough and strong enough to breathe on your own. While the breathing tube is in, you won't be able to speak, but you will be able to communicate in other ways. The breathing tube is usually removed the day of the operation, but if you're too sleepy, it may be left in overnight. You may have a sore throat and a hoarse voice for a little while afterwards. You'll be allowed some ice chips or sips of water once the tube has been out for a couple of hours. You may or may not have a tube in your nose that goes down to your stomach and that will come out um, as well in the next 12 hours. The breathing machine is behind you as you can see. You'll be attached to various IV lines which enable us to give you fluids and medications if necessary. You'll have a catheter in your bladder which will drain urine. You'll also have tubes in your chest which are attached to a drainage system. Most of these tubes will be removed before you leave the intensive care unit. However, some may remain for another day or two. Patients' descriptions of the intensive care experience vary. Some people hardly remember a thing, while others relate a sense of lost time or strange dreams. If afterwards anything concerns you, speak to your nurse. I remember coming, uh, coming around about six hours after the operation, I think. I can remember the nurse saying, squeeze my hand. I don't remember any, any tubes at all at that point in time. And I remember them finally taking the breathing tube out, and, and that was sort of a, a nice event because I remember it being really uncomfortable. I remember people telling me not to fight it, to, to go with it. I never knew that I had the operation. I, I was just thinking whether I am going to have it or it was all done. I remember my son and my, one of my daughters being there. A uh, little fleeting uh, memories. Visiting hours vary from hospital to hospital as do the number of visitors allowed. We recommend that you delegate one family member as spokesperson. Your friends and family may come to see you while you're still in intensive care, although if you're still asleep, you may not even realize they're there. He's doing fine. The operation's gone well. He's not awake yet. He may appear a little pale and puffy, mm -hmm. and that's normal. Visitors are sometimes surprised by a patient's appearance right after surgery and by all the monitoring equipment. Yet, the person may be cool to the touch, this is normal. Visitors will soon see improvement. After your breathing tube is removed, you'll begin the breathing exercises you were shown before surgery. Now put it in your mouth, close your mouth over it and take a big breath in. Excellent. That's perfect. Surgery may increase the mucus in your lungs. The breathing exercises help to expand your lungs and remove the mucus. Try to do the breathing exercises for three to five minutes every hour while you're awake. Some of the breathing exercises, I didn't find them difficult to do because we were given some tips on what to do and that was you hold your pillow or your teddy bear or whatever, you know, against your chest and you hold it tightly. It used to be a little, a little bit of pain here in the beginning, but after several two, three days, it was all normal. You'll be in the intensive care area for about 12 to 24 hours perhaps longer if more time is needed to stabilize the heart and lungs. Each patient's recovery is different. Dr. Northrop, you're in your room now and uh, you're back on B3. So welcome back. When you leave intensive care, you'll be moved to a post-operative ward where you will continue your recovery and rehabilitation until you are discharged. You will still be receiving oxygen and you will still have an IV and a bladder catheter. You'll also be put on telemetry, a portable monitoring system which allows the nursing staff to monitor your heart rate and rhythm. The healthcare team will also continue to monitor your temperature, pulse, blood pressure and breathing on a regular basis. Depending on your medical condition, blood tests, chest x-rays and electrocardiograms or ECGs will be done at varying intervals as necessary. If you're a diabetic, a diabetic specialist will participate in your care. Okay, Mr. Northup, I'm just going to check your dressing here. Make sure it's nice and dry. 
The nursing staff will check your incisions and your dressings daily and cleanse as necessary. After the first couple of days, the dressings will be removed if your incisions are dry. You may notice some redness, swelling, oozing and later bruising around your incisions. These changes are normal. After surgery, many patients report the sensation of their heart pounding. This is common. Some other common after effects of surgery which you may experience include a low-grade fever, sweating, nausea, and a regular heartbeat which can be treated with medication, soreness around your incisions, and some stiffness and aching in your back, arms, neck, and shoulders. Remember to ask for pain medication if you feel uncomfortable. Lunch is going to be here shortly. We're going to start you out on a fluid diet first. Okay. After surgery, you'll start with a liquid diet and progress to solid foods in a day or so. You'll be put on a healthy heart diet. A dietitian will be available if you have special concerns or if you want general counseling. A lack of appetite is common after surgery, but rest assured, your appetite will improve over time as you get better. As part of your routine, you'll be weighed every day. Don't be surprised if, despite not eating, you're gaining weight. This is a temporary condition, the result of your body retaining fluids after surgery. The health care team will give you diuretics or water pills to get rid of the excess fluid. The bladder tube is removed a couple of days after surgery. There are no bowel movements at first. By the time you need to have a bowel movement, you'll probably be able to walk to the bathroom yourself. What I want you to do is stand up nice and tall. Once you're on the ward, the objective is to get you up and moving. Hospital staff will get you sitting up fairly quickly after surgery, first in bed, then in a chair. They'll have you up and walking within a day or two. Take your time, just put one foot in front of the other. Soon you'll be more independent. As soon as possible, you'll be washing yourself, brushing your teeth, combing your hair, and perhaps shaving. You can take a shower three to five days after surgery. Every day, the team will review your progress and activity level and help you do a little more. Before you go home, you'll be taking a few short walks every day. Here are some tips to help you progress. Increase your time out of bed in a chair or walking every day. Avoid crossing your legs while sitting or lying in bed. When you're in bed, change position frequently, at least every two hours. Shifting from your back to one side, then the other, aids circulation and breathing. And pace yourself and spread activities out to prevent excessive fatigue. When the nurse said I could get up, I couldn't believe it. She's telling me to get out of bed and I've just been through all of this, you know. My energy level was strictly limited. And when I came to the end of my energy level, it was like falling off a cliff. That was the end of that. I was to sit down, lie down. I couldn't, it didn't taper off, it just stopped. When I talk to people, I say, when you're in a hospital, try to keep the visitors down because half the time you're going to be falling asleep on them. During your recovery from heart surgery, you may experience mood changes. At times, you may feel sad, irritable, anxious, and even angry. At other times, you may feel happy and pleased with your progress. It is quite natural to have these mood changes after heart surgery. Remember that the mood changes often reflect how you are feeling physically at the time, and negative moods will go away with time as your health improves. How you doing? To cut down on stress, plan for your discharge before you go into hospital. You won't need nursing care when you get home, but you will need someone available to help with the drive home, grocery shopping, cooking, and light housekeeping. I understood that you'd have one or two or several days of good days, and then you might have a down day, a blues day, a depression day. I understand that would happen, so when it hit, I'd say to myself, today is my down day. Emotionally, I was up and down. I cried several times. I was, I was, I was quite upset at various points, um, which I wasn't quite prepared for. I was crying about things on, see on television or something would happen, and, and, uh, but that passes. The experience of surgery affects the whole family. Family members find this time very stressful, often becoming aware of their own feelings of fatigue as the patient's recovery progresses. It's very important for them to make sure they're getting enough rest and enough support at this time. Before you go home, ask your health team about informational and educational services that may be available to you. 
Once you leave hospital, make sure you keep to your schedule of follow-up appointments. Following discharge, the patient is given instructions to follow up with their family doctor in a week or two uh, from going home. After that, they are to see their heart surgeon and cardiologist. At that time, it, a decision may be made to see a cardiac rehab specialist for further follow-up. Learning about their, their cardiac rehab program was very positive because I wanted a structured, monitored way to get myself back in the right path. The one thing that I found about the rehab group was actually being with people who had been through the same thing. It's a wonderful camaraderie group, but not only from an exercise group, physical, but mentally, socially, and um, emotionally. Now that you've had a chance to watch this presentation, you may also be interested in our companion video, Recovering from Heart Surgery. And remember, if you still have any unanswered questions, please consult your health team. When you go in for heart surgery, you get such marvelous care. Uh, the nurses, and the social workers, and the physiotherapists, doctors, everyone's working together, and they know what they're doing. It also is just simply not the big deal you might think it is. It's a lot of small, unpleasant deals, perhaps, some of the time, but uh, it's not an overwhelming blow or anything of that sort. The difference that it has made in my life after surgery compared to before, it's like damn night. After surgery, I was relieved of all those tensions. No shortness of breath, no feeling of weakness, not afraid of having a heart attack. So naturally, I was all a new person. And look at me now. I never since my operation had to take nitro or feel angina. To be able to go home, walk out the door, and walk around the block was a big thrill for me. And in fact, I had the surgery at um, about the middle of October, and I was skiing in January. So when I got the word that, Neil, you're going to Mora, that was one of the happiest days of my life. <laughs>